Hey guys, you may recall I recently picked up a Stromberg Carlson TS-10 tabletop set. I got it, well, because I like them. It's close to me and in good condition. Now, they're also very heavy and awkward. It's a big boxy cabinet, hard to get a good grip on it. So I pulled the chassis to bring it inside. And since I got the chassis out of the cabinet, I figured... In this video, we'll take a closer look at it and try to power it up. Here it is up on the workbench, <laughs> and I warn you, if you think about if you're thinking about getting one of these sets or working on one, they are immensely heavy. Even just this bare chassis getting it up here. Oh man. And to top it off, when you have this out of the cabinet. This is extremely fragile. So there's one very big difference between this and the Duman I worked on recently. They're both RA-103 based chassis, but that was a D version. This is an earlier version. Very different tuning mechanism. Whereas the later versions have a bunch of gears here and cams and uh, all kinds of cool <laughs> mechanisms. This is just a shaft going straight into the tuner. A little bit of a gear reduction on the other side. But it does have a rather neat complicated dial mechanism here. Here's a closer look at it. I presume when you change what mode you're in, different parts of this light up or some such. So on the innermost ring here, we have 7 through 13, that's the upper VHF. Outward from that we have the FM radio band going from, oh boy, it's kind of hard to read this, 88 to 106, kind of overlaps here. And then the outermost is channels 1 through 6. So it looks like the outermost, it goes 1 through 6 and there's a block for FM and a gap and then 7 through 13. So. It's just one light bulb behind it. I have not seen one of these in operation. I'm assuming it makes more sense when you have that light going and you can see which part of it is enabled. Uh, but all that regardless, you just have a single knob right down the middle that you rotate around. But this is rather frozen, which is one of the things I want to take a look at. If you work on one of these, if you're checking one out, and this shaft is, is stiff, don't force it. There's a fragile ceramic shaft behind this. It could just be the grease is seized up. You don't want to break that. We'll, we'll open it up, we'll take a look at it before we're gonna do anything else. Now the other horror show thing you're looking at here, this goo that's dripped down and sticky and running down. Unfortunately, that's the, the it's very common. It's the material they used to cushion the CRT glass CRT between the metal band holding it down. They put this black tar rubber substance over time and melts. I've seen somewhere just runs down the face of it. Easy enough to clean up with some mineral spirits, lacquer thinner, your solvent of choice, but yeah, unfortunately it's messy. So in this area, it's still kind of pliable, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty bad. Especially over here, I imagine heat accelerates the process. And below it is actually a piece of wood. So I was curious that uh, the other version I, I currently worked, I recently worked on, was a 12 inch, is a 10. I was wondering how did they make up the difference? Oh, well, they put an inch thick, <laughs> or three quarters inch thick piece of wood down below to get this higher up. It's also rather filthy. Clean that off. So, why would they make a 10 and a 12? 50 bucks price difference, something like that. For marketing folks to give the hit their different price points, I imagine. Uh, so the other two big things that would prevent this set from working. So we might have a seized up tuner. We don't know if the picture tube is good or not. Actually, there's a few other potential big things. Well, one, hey, is a first look underneath the chassis. I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Cool. 
That's what I was hoping to see. It looks to be 100% original. Yeah, I'm not seeing any signs that this has been worked on at all. So, few things. This guy is commonly a source of trouble. It's a big old focus 25 watt rheostat down here. Uh, often these can dome resistors are open in one or more sections. And finally, the relay up here. So, if by some miracle, <laughs> the rheostat's good, the, actually there's another candle down here. So, if by, some by, if by some miracle, the relay is good, all three candome resistors are good, the focus rheostat is good, the CRT is good, perhaps we can get a raster on this. But there's a whole lot of ifs in there. Yeah, this is high-end quality stuff, but nothing lasts forever. We're going to give it a try. First off, though, let's pop the cover on that tuner and see what's going on. Looks like we have a series of Phillips screws holding it down. Also, just notice a service tag of sorts on here. Caution, 10,000 volts. Read service manual before making adjustments. All right, it's not a service label. It's just a warning to the user. Boy, this has got a lot of dust on it. All right, let's see. It looks like this bulb's going to be in place there in the way of. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. This reminds me of the other set. You can't get it all the screws. <laughs> there's four across the top. We have to remove this light bulb to get it to one here, but there's four on the other side. One right next to this guy. Others with a CRT in the place. I can't get at them. But I'll try the trick I used on the other one, which is to take needle nose pliers and get down in there and grab the screw head by the side and try to work it out. Yeah, it's got to come out. Ah, screwdriver's too big. Hang on, here we go. Whoa, what's it? At least this one's plastic. I believe there are versions that are glass. I mean, the glass is nice and that it's got cool painted uh, sections on it, but uh, obviously fragile. All right, so that was the easy part. Now the tricky part. Hmm. Huh. I suspect I wasn't the first person to go in here because. All these screws were just finger tight. So, no trouble at all to get them off. Alright, are you ready? Here we go. Oh, it's not broken. So glad. It's also so frozen. Yeah, what happens is the grease in here, there, it's just all turned super gummy. So I'll spray, oh, I guess old WD-40 down in there, see if that starts to free things up. Use some deoxid on it as well, clean up the contacts. So That's working fairly well, but we have some issues. One, see that gear, it's, it's kind of bent this way. I'm not sure if that's right or not, or if the shaft got bent. But a much bigger problem is this outer gear. This guy here, it's phenolic. And I'm guessing somebody tried to turn this knob while the shaft was all gummed up. And they really chewed the heck out of uh, about a fifth of the gears on here. And when that suction gets down in there, it starts slipping. Like that. Now, depending on where the dial that is, it might not be that big a deal. 
because it's not like I'm going to be tuning in VHF channels. So it looks like we're good around two channels two and three. Yeah, it's around four and five and six where it craps out. And it looks like we're good for the FM band. So right at the edge of the FM band, channel six through four are messed up. That's a little annoying because I may want to use channel four. Now I do have a parts chassis which I believe has the same mechanism. I might be able to transfer a gear from that. But that aside, it looks like we're in business. So, uh, I'll put the cover back on and throw in a couple screws because I don't want to accidentally damage that. Uh, we'll tip this thing on its side and hook up a Variac and uh, let's see what we can do. Now we do have one thing to consider when we try to do on a slow power up which is its relay because its relay doesn't engage uh, until it, one of the tubes is fully on and conducting. It's a delay start and if I do a slow power up that relay is not going to be getting engaged which means B plus is not going to be going to the caps and they can't form up so I am going to bypass that relay. Alright a few things. One I have the relay bypassed now. I have tried a full power up with the rectifier tubes out and if that does turn on the two filaments do light up. The original 5U4s that this came with are toast. One is just <laughs> got elements rattling loose inside and both appear to have gone to air so I dug out a couple 5U4 GBs. I'm going to toss these in. Got the Variac down to zero. We're going to slowly power up while we monitor the main B plus on that meter. Okay, here we go. Start out with just got 10 volts. Are we drawing any current? I had to work this power switch a few times. It seems to be a little flaky. There we go. And the current draw is dropping. That's good. That's good. So, I'll resume recording when something happens. I've been slowly working my way up to the point where we have about 320 volts on B+. Now, just before I started recording this segment, I realized that I had the mode switch in the wrong mode. I was in um, like phono mode and when you do that it kills power to the deflection circuits and a bunch of stuff on the set so I wasn't drawing full power and I realized that and I put it in this mode now we have the ah, dial light uh, enabled so let's keep going I got about 95 volts in this is round about where things start happening I <laughs> uh, couldn't have planned that better we have deflection we have illumination fantastic B plus has been rock stable as I've been slowly increasing this has just been going up settling down going up settling down Going up a little higher. Alright, we got about 110 ish going into the set now. That's volume, that's mode. One of these should be brightness, and it's not. Neither one of these knobs is. Changing the brightness of the screen has me a little concerned. Try 
Trying to see if I can get a little more height out of it. Centering. All right. So I suppose I can try feeding a signal in. Now, before we do that, let's check something out. I'm shut everything down. I'm going to remove my jumper wire and let's see if that relay is operational. All right. So. And on. Yeah, damn, the relay is good. Fantastic. It's a heck of a thunk, but yes, it worked. The sun is on. We have raster. I'd rather have my jumper wire in place. And here we go. Here's the relay. Here comes our raster. Oh, let's see. Get a little window circle pattern. Channel 4, full power. Okay, can we tune it in? It's not seem like it. Channel eight. No, I mean, we're not getting snow or anything. There's no hint of reception coming through. Alright, so let's see. Ah, focus control is actually good. A little flaky, but man, that's fantastic. Uh, let's try uh, just wiggling tubes, look for any that are lit up. And uh, test them if we have to. Tube. I don't know, it's lighting up. I was about to say it was not. Ooh. <laughs> that guy was not illuminated a second ago. Yeah, and there's just kind of static y come, stuff coming through now. Son of a gun, that was it. I mean, at least to get some snow coming through. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah. And yeah, something is up with these controls. Should be brightness and contrast in there. Neither one is doing much of anything. Man, 
this thing started to tune. Which is a horizontal hold control on the back. Let's try manipulating that. Yeah, that has an effect. And a vertical hold that's on the back too. I guess that's probably brightness, but man, it's just that should be having more of an effect than that. Which means this contrast. And has an effect, but it seems like when I let go, like when I move the control, it affects it, then it kind of fades back to where it was. Like maybe it's a leaky capacitor, pulling some voltage down. All right, let's see if I can figure out what vertical hold is on the back. one of these. I'm going to pry that one. Well, that's surprising very, very, very often. Vertical. Ah, <sighs> verticals got the worst problems. But hey, how's that for our first power off? But well, you know me. Once I get something up on the workbench and start tinkering with it, I can't let go. So <laughs> I did do a little bit of basic recapping, which had a tremendous impact on the image quality. Replaced a couple caps on the DC restoration circuit which feeds into the brightness control which got that working properly. I also recapped the vertical oscillator and vertical integrator and that got the vertical hold and height and linearity good. And I replaced a cap or two, not just one cap on the horizontal oscillator and uh, one or two on the sink separator or amplifier or inverter and there we go the multi-burst pattern is pretty respectable too, we've got pretty good definition out to here. So let's wrap up this video by feeding in some live video. Alrighty, hooked up a video source. Let's see if we can tune in some actual moving pictures. Yeah, that's so great though. So we've got some work to do. Looks like the gain isn't so hot. We've got a lot of noise, but <laughs> for a little bit of work, uh, not too shabby, not too shabby. Now I did notice while poking around underneath that uh, the electrolytics are a little bit crusty here. I'll show you what I mean. Here's the underside looking at some of the electrolytics. See, there's a little bit of crud coming out there. And around the seam on this guy. That's not a good sign. That means electrolyte has been oozing out and drying out, getting crusty. So uh, I suspect those should help. 
probably got some resistors out of spec. I did check the tubes, replaced a few weak ones, didn't make a whole lot of difference, but anyway, not too shabby for a little bit of poking around, replacing a few caps, a couple tubes. So, definitely uh, a very worthy complete restoration candidate. Be in the not too distant future. Right now, I'm gearing up for the early television fall swap meet in a few days. That's it for now. Thanks for watching this look at a Stromberg Carlson TS10 from around 1948.